Hey guys, I'm Nate from Good Man Racing. This is the... <coughs> oh man, I just got dust in my eye. Okay, hold on. Oh, good heavens. Not gonna do that again. Well, hopefully this video, jeez. Oh, oh man. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, don't, don't touch mud and dust and have it fall in your eye. That sounds like a great idea underneath a race car. This is the Forerunner that we are going to race the bottom 1000 in, and I wanted to give you a part two to the after action report for Cinco de Baja. Now, um, of the things that we covered, I talked about off-road lights in the third video. I am borrowing the Baja Designs lights, and I'm going to be taking them off soon to give them back to Rick, who is the owner of them. It is a kit that's actually made for the Ford Bronco. So I made all of the mounting uh, hardware on my end do two things. One, fit uh, the kit that Rick let me borrow. By the way, Rick, thank you so much for doing that. They were vital to our off-road race. And the second part is make it future-proof, as in... I can work with uh, different lights, whether they be Baja Designs or Rigid or something else. In the third video, um, the narrator, which by the way uh, was a AI voice on a script that I wrote, the narrator talks about how we were outrunning these off-road lights because of their placement. The placement of the lights are in directly in front of the wheel well. They're like right here. Mounted waist high or so. And they cast shadows that were extremely aggressive and hard to see through. So having lights on the top of the truck would help with that. So once I can get a light rack overhead. I'm not leaning towards a light bar. I don't think that looks really good with a truck like mine. Something a little more round, a little more retro would probably go a long way in that regard. And from a function standpoint, it was really nice to work with pods. Like the Baja Designs pods really worked great. So I would rather be able to aim each one of them individually rather than have an entire array that I'm trying to work around. Because I already do that in the uh, grill of the truck. And I don't want to do that again on top. So lights. Need to give Rick his lights back. And I need to figure out low lights. Like lights at waist high. Those will probably be amber in color. And then the overhead lights. Other specific things that we are going to do to the truck. We talked about suspension in the last video. We talked about some improvements to the cabin, but police sirens, they're already installed in the truck. I need to mount a push to talk button or some type of momentary switch that would allow the navigator to actuate that easier. We couldn't use it at all because of its placement, it was just out of arm's reach and in a very inconvenient spot. And since it's this whole like module thing rather than a single button, it's a lot of, it's a lot of real estate to put on that, that Garmin mount that we made. Um, huh. The chase lights are also mounted or controlled via the police siren setup. The police siren setup has two uh, light relays built into it, and I just have both of those activating certain light modes for the chase. I need that to be wired to the ignition. Ironically enough, Best in the Desert requires it that way, as in the light turns on with the ignition turning on. So I am going to set up a switch assembly that's based upon ignition on rather than uh, the police siren setup 
These are real specific things, like low-level detail stuff that's in the second AAR. But it's stuff that I think that you should think about if you're gonna be making your own off-road rig. Other things that we tried to do but did not work, uh, putting GoPros inside the car. I think GoPro is a cool brand. However, the overheating issues that are prevalent with that brand definitely bleed into off-road racing a lot. So I think another brand of uh, like action camera is probably in order. Um, if, if I'm borrowing uh, GoPros from buddies, I love that. If they're not working, that's just unfortunate. Um, but DJI, Insta360, some other guys, I would like to explore those products uh, for videography, especially in cabin videography, but time will tell. And especially if there's like a GoPro, like a 360 GoPro, totally down for trying that too. I got dust in the other eye now. Great, this is a bad spot for a video. Oh man, need to have safety glasses or something. <sighs> yeah, we had a lot of rain here in Houston and it still did clean out all of the uh, dust and debris that's in the forearm. Mm, other things to think about. What are the things that did I want to genuinely improve? Not really. <laughs> oh, um, my cabin, the area that the guys sit in, the occupant section, or the pilot and the co-pilot, it is in a small vehicle. This 4Runner is small enough to be a class 3 race car rather than a class 7 like the 5th generation 4Runner is. Uh, I mean, actually, I don't know if they raced at class 7 in 2009. They might, it might have been just a production only class or something like that. I forget, I'm so sorry. But. <sighs> but I might modify the floor. <laughs> the belly pan of the truck. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on what it's actually called. footwells, something. I want to drop the seats lower or buy different seats that allow people to sit lower in the cabin. That way the guys have more helmet clearance. This truck solidly meets the three inch minimum that score requires for helmet clearance, even with like a six foot two tall guy. But with some comments that are being recommended to score as of late for uh, future roll cage like requirements. They're talking about four inches and that means I need to figure out how to drop everything another inch or two. And if I'm gonna be doing all the work to uh, floor, floor plan, floor pan, yeah, floor pan, okay. If I'm gonna be doing all the work necessary to drop the floor pan and uh, add some more clearance that way, I'm probably just going to give the guys a lot more room. Other things that we need to do uh, based upon the experience we have with Cinco de Baja, what else? We did not have this issue in Cinco de Baja, but having a second uh, battery setup that you can control and coordinate uh, would be nice for the Baja 1000. So uh, changing up the kill switch to be able to switch between one battery, two batteries, and uh, and car kill, that's a good idea. Uh, Steve provided one to me and I am going to see if it works with the setup that I have. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, oh well, I'll give it back. Uh, limit straps. I need to mount limit straps on the back of the 4Runner. I have some to work on. Again, Steve's letting me borrow some. Mm. You see the spring right here? 
this spring. Close my eyes so I don't get any dust in there. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that spring is the 550 pounder. It needs to be heavier. I got quotes from Total Chaos today on the coilovers and shock absorbers that they actually have in stock. They have the bypass shocks um, in stock for these things. That would be great. But between the cost of the front coilovers and the front bypasses, I mean, you're looking at three to four grand right there alone. And it's not like I can just sell off these rad flows. Someone's got to have a suspension that's compatible with them. Though I could try. Doesn't hurt to try. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I think that is it. There might be some other specific things that I don't remember, but hey, you know what? That's the uh, that's the curse of doing stuff in one takes, right? So I am Nate from Good Mayhem Racing. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more. And I will see you on the desert, if not my garage. Bye.